All right, so in the last episode, I pulled this automatic transmission out of the car. Uh, very gracefully, I might add. And I'm gonna post this up for uh, free scrap metal. I forgot to mention this thing. Actually lost third and fourth gear just before I started this swap. Uh, the very last day I drove this thing home, I had to limp it back in second gear. And uh, I've had an automatic transmission warning light since the day I bought the car, so it was definitely time to junk this thing. So the first step today is to clean up the huge oil spill that seems to be inevitable anytime you uh, remove a transmission. Then we'll take care of all of the things needed before I slam this manual transmission in there. Rear main seal, clutch and flywheel, clutch hydraulic line, all that stuff. All right, I got this rear main seal installed and I uh, applied a generous amount of RTV to this bottom seal here for the oil pan. Um, I sure hope that that holds. There was like a piece of rubber kind of seal here. So I cleaned up the uh, oil pan here and I just gooped a lot of RTV in there. So hopefully not too much of it ended up, you know, in the oil pan, but uh, I think we'll be okay. And uh, the next step is to remove this, like, I guess you can call this a pilot bushing for the automatic. Um, this is the manual pilot bushing, which goes inside the crankshaft here, and this whole like big kind of circle thing needs to come out. These can be a little bit tricky, but I did buy a tool, which is a uh, bearing polar tool and a slide hammer. So I think, hopefully if I can grab the back side of this thing with my uh, bearing polar, then the slide hammer will uh, pull this thing out. All right, I got that bad boy out of there finally. I had to kind of carve down my uh, the kind of grabbers of this bearing puller because the gap was so small between the back of the crank and this thing. But once I got these carved down, it worked pretty good. All right, so next we just gotta tap this guy in there. Should be pretty easy. I'm just gonna find a socket that fits this uh, size here. All right, I got that thing hammered in there and uh, I think I was probably a little rough on it. So so I went ahead and actually sanded down any sort of like edge that I might've caused and actually came in with a little file just to make sure any edge is gone on this thing. So the next step is to uh, put this flywheel on here and we'll be uh, ready to bolt the clutch up and then the transmission's next. All right, you know, uh, before I start bolting on this uh, clutch and flywheel stuff, I should probably switch out this wiring harness now. Um, I have a few wires kind of hanging down there, and uh, I recognize a few of them here. I, I sort of vaguely remember uh, pulling this off the donor engine when I bought the car, and it's definitely all on the passenger side over there. Um, but it should all unplug from here and then plug back in. This is kind of like a mini harness that replaces the automatic one. You know, let's, uh, let's take a look here. I can at least uh, get an idea as to which direction 
which direction this thing goes. All right, so I see a match here, maybe a cut. Ooh, looks like a cut wire, so I'll have to figure that out. And this guy, I don't know. And then from there, this kind of reaches up and goes um, somewhere up there. But there should be a handful of plugs somewhere, maybe towards the front of the car I can try and find here. All right, so I, uh, I think I got this wiring harness thing figured out. It does seem to be this harness here that, that plugs in right behind the passenger's headlight. And uh, it kind of makes its way back behind the power steering pump and hooks up everything for the alternator. Uh, those wires were definitely a little tricky to undo, but, but you can kind of reach up behind the alternator and get those out without too much trouble. So here's my new harness. So it seems like this uh, mini harness here pretty much runs your transmission and your alternator. So I just need to unplug these guys. I got a few more wire ties very deep down under there and this thing should come out. All right, finally got this guy out of there and I didn't cut any of the wires, so I'm pretty proud of myself. Uh, gosh, I really should not get these two confused. Um, this is the new one. This is the manual one. And this is the automatic, the automatic one I just pulled out. And uh, so this guy is this one here. So I'll clip this one and solder it to my harness here. All right. Awesome. Good to have this out. And uh, that's pretty much it. I guess I can put this one back in, but otherwise, that's the last automatic part for this thing. So now it's finally time to start installing manual parts. All right, well, uh, a little bit of unfortunate news. I So I looked up online and there's supposed to be a dust plate that goes between the transmission and the engine. And I I don't have that dust plate. There's actually supposed to be two dust plates and I have one of them. So I have this guy right here, which is kind of like an inspection plate that goes um, somewhere like below or to the side or something like that. Um, this is the automatic or half of the automatic dust plate, but it is different for the manual, unfortunately. And uh, you know, I could probably bolt this thing on without the dust shield, but I know that's not really a good idea. Um, you know, these clearances are very, very precise, but yeah, that's a, that's a bummer because I'm gonna have to wait for it to get shipped. So I don't know, maybe I think I'll jump on the computer and I'll check around Facebook Marketplace and, you know, whatever, offer up and I'll see if I can find one locally because I really wanted to get this thing in today. All right, there we go. It's looking good. Got these guys all cleaned up and uh, got this wire repaired and I uh, and fixed up some of this wire loom while I was at it. Awesome, looks good. All right, so I got this wire loom ran back through here. Got the alternator plugged in. That was uh, that was interesting. That's a pretty tight little spot there, but I managed. I think that should be it. I think from here, these will run along the side of the transmission. Um, I got this guy, which goes to the oil pressure sensor, but uh, I'm not gonna plug this in yet because I'm thinking I might try and replace this guy. I have the classic uh, 300ZX kind of inconsistent oil pressure gauge, which is, uh, it's a little bit scary, but uh, supposedly these things get clogged up really easily. So maybe I'll try and grab a new one of those. And these last few wires here, I'm pretty sure are all got this 
automatic transmission wires. Um, these were the few that I cut right here. Um, it looks like this is its own loom. If you look up there, you can kind of see it going into the engine bay. So I think I might try and just pull this loom out of there. All right, so I got this like uh, extra automatic loom removed and I was looking to plug in these wires here, which are my, my four main harness wires for the alternator and the manual transmission. Um, however, when I look down here, I can see that this guy is a uh, six pin connector and the one I have on my new manual harness is an eight pin connector and it seems like seven are used. So I'm gonna have to do some splicing on this guy. Here, this is my automatic harness. So just looking at the wire colors here, it does seem like four out of the six do match up. So we have like a blue, a yellow, black, um, another sort of yellowish one and a red and white. So those four do match. Um, however, the next ones don't seem to match. We got a white and green. We got another green wire and another green wire. A lot of green wires on here. So we're gonna have to figure out which wires match um, for these wires here. I mean, I'm assuming these two will match up to these guys. And then we do have this last wire on the end here, which is kind of an unknown thing. All right, I'm gonna go digging around on some uh, wiring diagrams and uh, hopefully we can get to the bottom of this. All right, some awesome news. I did manage to get a hold of one of those uh, transmission dust shield plate things. Uh, I texted my local 300ZX guru and he knew a guy that had a spare one and he was willing to sell to me uh, for a good deal too. Uh, so thanks, Paul, you're a lifesaver. Uh, I can get this clutch and flywheel in today and uh, get this transmission installed now. I also grabbed a new oil pressure sensor thing. I'm gonna install this thing too while I have uh, good access to it. These things are notorious for failing uh, like-minded. So fingers crossed this one holds up. Uh, it's made in Japan, so that's a good sign. All right, let's crawl under this thing and uh, get this stuff installed. All right, I got the uh, flywheel on, I got the clutch disc in, got the clutch alignment tool in there, of course, and uh, got the pressure plate on as well. The uh, pressure plate kind of middle spring things definitely flattened out a lot, but I've seen some of these pressure plates flatten out quite a bit, so hopefully that's normal. I did get this cut stud um, drilled out and grinded out and uh, showered myself in a bunch of metal, but I got this uh, new bolt in here and I was, I was considering welding the top, but you know, I think I'm just gonna leave it like this and I'll just get a wrench. Um, it's not gonna be easy, but it's not something I'll be taking in and out very often. So I think that'll be just fine. You know, there is one thing I realized that I really should do before putting this transmission in. And I'm very glad that I remembered because I think um, it would be much more difficult to put this guy in um, after the transmission's in. Um, this is the clutch fluid line. So, you know, I'm not 100% sure where this is supposed to go, but I think it's kind of supposed to go uh, up, like above the transmission, maybe. I mean, basically it has to connect the transmission slave cylinder, which is somewhere in this area, up and around and into the pedal area, which is gonna be up there. Um, I suppose I can just follow this, uh, here, let me, uh, let me get some light. I could follow this wire loom up here. Um, you know, this hose came in two different options, a shorter and a longer one. And I know the longer one was meant to follow some sort of factory clutch route. Um, maybe this tab has something to do with it. I think the shorter clutch hose was meant for conversions because, you know, you don't really have a clutch line to follow anyway. All right, well, that's the transmission side. Let's see if we can figure out where the uh, clutch pedal side connects. All right, so here's where I'm pretty sure the stock clutch pedal bolts up and the clutch master cylinder connects to it here on the firewall. I'm pretty sure I'll have to drill out pedal mounting holes and uh, maybe widen this hole up a little bit.
All right, got the uh, two bolt holes drilled out and I got the uh, center hole widened up so it'll fit this master cylinder through there. And I got to use my, uh, one of my favorite tools which is this little uh, right angle, little like a uh, drill bit adapter. And this thing is pretty clutch when you have like a really tight uh, area to drill just like this. And uh, you know, one thing that was kind of weird I noticed was that the shape of this does not seem to really want to go flush with this kind of like raised edge of this what looks like a, a stiffening plate or something and I looked up a few uh, YouTube videos about people changing their master cylinders and it seems like the manual maybe doesn't have this plate um, you know and it seemed like it might have been spot welded right where the bolt holes go through so that if you drill out those bolt holes maybe you can kind of peel off this thing or something but it seems like it's seam sealed on there and then it paints it on there. And I kind of like the idea of having a stiffening plate here to maybe help prevent the firewall from flexing a little bit. Um, so I guess now I just have to bolt in this clutch pedal, bolt in the brake pedal. And uh, actually this is kind of exciting. It's kind of an important moment. I'm officially putting the third pedal in the car. So it's pretty tight up there. So it's not gonna be easy to get this pedal removed and, and to get the two installed, but uh, we'll see how it goes. Ooh, all right, this, uh, this brake pedal's kind of kicking my butt right now, but I think I almost got it. Got the two wires unplugged here. Um, I got this big like airbag module sort of control unit, and this thing had these uh, tamper-proof like Torx bolts, um, which makes me think like they don't want you to mess with it, but I don't think I have a choice, so I had to unbolt it, but you know, it's still, oh, there we go. It's loose, but it won't come out. It's kind of like, kind of locked in there in its place, so. So hopefully I can kind of push it out of the way just enough to, to get this thing out of there. All right, there you go. Um, this is the, uh, the manual pedal and the automatic pedal. Um, you know, it was actually just really kind of thinking maybe I would just cut this thing and make my life easier. And now that I'm looking at it, it really does seem like it's the exact same, exact same thing. Yeah, these things line up perfectly. Um, well, there you go. If you're doing this yourself and you uh, don't have a uh, manual brake pedal, uh, I would suggest just cutting your automatic brake pedal and maybe getting a uh, rubber pad for it. Success. <laughs> and uh, my bolts are lining up perfectly too. So I guess I got lucky and, uh, and drilled them in the right place. Um, but I was a little bit worried about that because, you know, it seemed like those spot welds were kind of the markers for the clutch pedal bolt. But, uh, you know, I wasn't sure. Um, maybe if I leave it loose, kind of just like hang in there, I can uh, move it around enough to work the new brake pedal back in and then I can bolt everything up once I'm done. All right, let's give it a try. All right, got that uh, brake pedal in there. That was very hard to get out and very easy to get back in. I guess just because I had everything already shoved out of the way, but man, look at that. That's a beautiful sight to see. No matter how many uh, manual swaps I do, I never stop getting a smile on my face that first time I see the three pedals up there. <laughs> 